Man, I tell you, I love engine builds with individual throttle bodies. That old 60s sports car vibe is tough to beat. I mean, just look at it. This particular build is being done by my friends at Prestige Motorsports out of Concord, North Carolina. And it will be going into a high-end GT40 replica. Since a GT40, when done right, absolutely has to be lightweight to scream through the turns, the guys at Prestige chose an all-aluminum package. Now, there aren't a lot of producers of aluminum blocks from Ford Windsors, so they went with one from Carroll Shelby Engine Company. Shelby says that at approximately 90 pounds, this aluminum casting is 45% lighter than a factory iron block. But it's also stronger and can shrug off the stress that comes from producing big horsepower. As you can see, it's got all the cool features like screw-in freeze plugs and billet four-bolt main caps. The block can be knocked out to make displacements as high as 461 cubic inches. But we're keeping things a bit more sane with a 4-inch 125 thousandths bore and a 4-inch stroke to make a good old 427. By the time we got here, they'd already dropped in the forged eagle crankshaft with 4 inches of stroke, which is half an inch longer than stock. The Shelby block can handle the stroke thanks to a 9.5 inch deck height. The main studs on the 4-bolt billet steel main caps are pulled to 100 foot-pounds while the canted outer bolts on the center three caps are pulled to 70. For additional strength, the valley of the aluminum block has straps cast in from bank to bank, as well as beefy lifter bushings. You can't really see it, but the block decks are pretty thick, also at three quarters of an inch for maximum strength. So that's all done. We might as well stick some pistons in there. Prestige Motorsports has a strong relationship with DSS Racing Pistons, so they had them make these custom slugs for this build. These pistons come with a 9cc dish to help control the compression ratio and help keep the engine pump gas friendly. They have a slipper skirt design to minimize both weight and internal friction. And the compression height, by the way, is 1.225 inches. The connecting rods are sourced from Eagle like the crank. These H-beam forgings measure out at six and a quarter inches from center to center and are sized with a two inch 100 thousandths rod journal. Oh, and the bearings for both the rods and the mains are coated units from King. These pistons use spiral locks to hold the wrist pins in place. To make sure things are really secure, they actually have two on each side, which Larry installs here. The ring set is 1.2 millimeters for the top and second rings and three for the oil ring. And the top ring is steel and gapped to 20 thousandths of an inch, while the Napier second ring is opened up just a bit more to 22 thousandths. So now let's stick these pistons and rods into their new home. After confirming the rod bolt stretch at five and a half thousandths of an inch, Larry torques the rest of the rod bolts to 63 foot-pounds. Like the pistons, Prestige has their own camshaft made for this build. It's a hydraulic roller and it's been ground big. <laughs> really big, actually, for a street-oriented small block. The duration is 259 degrees at 50 thousandths of an inch of tappet lift for the intakes and 269 for the exhaust. The lobe lift, meanwhile, is 427 thousandths for the intakes and 410 for the exhaust. Larry degrees in the cam to make sure it'll be opening the valves exactly when desired and then presses on the harmonic damper from Innovators West. Now, let's flip this bad boy over and get the bottom end sealed up. 
Larry uses a one-piece oil pan gasket, which is less prone to leaking. But just to make extra sure, a thin film of oil-resistant silicone is coated on both sides. The oil pan from Aviate has a unique old-school look with its rounded sides. And its low-profile design has a 7-quart capacity and it's constructed from steel. Larry spins the engine back to right side up and begins work on the valve train. He begins by coating the lifter bores in assembly lube and then gently slides the tie bar roller lifters from Gatorman into position so that they can engage the cam lobes. Also, just check out all that structural support in the block. The tie bars on these lifters came really close to touching the lifter bosses, but thankfully nothing hit so he didn't have to modify anything. Sealing the combustion chambers are a pair of Felpro composite head gaskets. We were able to go with composite here instead of more expensive multi-layer steel gaskets because both the block and the head are aluminum and their matched expansion rates are easier on the gaskets to handle. The compressed thickness, by the way, is 41 thousandths of an inch. Interestingly, while practically any Windsor part will bolt to this block, the one component that will not are the half inch main studs. That's because the Shelby block is threaded extra deep to protect the deck from warping. So the ARP main studs are longer than usual and get their own specific part number. Prestige has their own CNC machining design and cut capabilities and these cylinder heads are one of their many custom products they produce. This is a Brodix Track 1 casting that Prestige modifies to their own requirements. It has a 72cc combustion chamber and 220cc intake runners. The intake valves are sized at 2 inches 100 thousandths, while the exhausts are an inch 570. With the highly efficient 72cc chambers, the compression ratio comes out to 10 and a half to 1. And once the heads are in place, the head studs are pulled to 110 foot pounds. Up top, we have a double nested valve spring setup that's strong enough to handle the heavier hydraulic lifters. And they're held in place by a set of stainless steel retainers. And here's another look at that big CNC cut 220cc intake port. Finally, we can get to just what might be the coolest part of this build the Borla individual stack injection system. This is the plenum casting, which looks old school, but it's actually a brand new casting with several updates to accommodate modern EFI, like a map sensor and idle air control. But before we begin putting the intake on the engine, I want to show you the underside. As you can see, there's a large pocket hidden underneath. Now that's not for hiding your Twinkies, it's actually a balance chamber and its purpose is to help equalize all the intake pulses from the eight cylinders to help the engine run more smoothly. A plate bolts to the underside of the intake and the O-ring sandwiches between the plate and the casting to seal this chamber from the atmosphere. Once this plate is bolted up, the plenum casting goes on over the lifter valley just like any other intake manifold. Some of the bolts, however, slot right up against the outside of the intake runners. So to make installation and removal easier, Prestige uses socket headed bolts. Each combustion chamber gets its own dedicated intake port. And then each port has a hole drilled into it that leads to the balance chamber. That's the small hole you can see at the six o'clock position on these ports. This helps the map sensor read accurately so the ECU can more efficiently control the engine for best operation. Oh, and that big assembly just above it is the idle air control. This Borla individual runner intake is supposed to look like a setup with old Weber carbs, but they are completely set up for fuel injection. And the EFI setup is really well camouflaged. Well, maybe except for the throttle position sensor up front, but that's the only thing. Borla also has a fully polished setup, but these are as cast units. Those air horns are CNC cut from billet and available in different sizes to help tune the engine to your needs. In the center between the runners is the billet capstan throttle linkage. 
It works so that all eight butterflies open up at the same time and at the same rate. Burying the opening rate was a big deal back when racers were running carbureted setups. But now that we're in the age of EFI, it's just no longer important. Besides looking good, this thing is built really nice too. It actually pivots on ball bearings for a smooth throttle pedal under your right foot. The distributor chosen is one of Holley's dual sync units. Now these are super popular when running any Holley engine management system and we're running a Holley Terminator X, so that's us. That's because it tracks both the crankshaft and the camshaft position for proper fuel and spark timing. Oh, and here's a look at the hoses in place that will route the fuel. A pair of billet fuel rails just wouldn't fit the vibe with this old school looking setup, but these black hoses blend right in. Up front, Prestige put together a serpentine belt driven accessory setup. It uses components from various manufacturers and bracketry that's designed to keep everything nice and compact to the engine, so the entire package will fit in the widest variety of chassis types possible. After getting everything set up and checking for proper push rod length, Prestige has to order a set, so that's why we're doing this step practically last. The push rods we're using are 7 inches 450 thousandths long for both the intakes and the exhausts with an 80 thousandths thick wall. They mate to a set of Jessel rockers. Now these are all aluminum full rollers with a ratio of 1.6 to 1 for both the intakes and the exhaust. That'll make gross valve lift 683 thousandths and 656 thousandths of an inch respectively. Larry seats the hydraulic lifters with one and a quarter turns of the adjuster after the lash is taken up and then locks everything down. And now we can bolt the cast valve covers down and button everything up to get ready for the dyno. It's time for the fun to really get started. On the dyno, we're burning pump gas just like any street vehicle. The engine controls are handled by a Holley Terminator X ECU, which saves a big headache. We pulled the engine from 3300 RPM all the way to 6400 and it was a beast all the way through. It started with well over 400 foot pounds of torque and finished the pull with 486.7. And the peak hit a very satisfying 531.9 foot pounds of torque at 4700 RPM. The horsepower meanwhile never stopped climbing and was at 593.1 when we stop the pull at redline. That is almost certainly a number starting with a six in there had we kept going, but the guys at Prestige don't chase numbers and they had already determined the redline for the long-term health of the valve springs. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and maybe a comment and we'll see you next time with more awesome engineers.